In this video, we're gonna take this photo and we're gonna turn it into this photo using Lightroom and we'll use a little bit of Photoshop right at the end for some quick retouching. My name is Matt Klaskowski. Thanks so much for watching this series. It's been a lot of fun. I take my photos, I just hit reset and do the whole development process right in front of you. You can grab the raw photos for free. You don't have to pay for them. You can follow along. Uh, you can follow along and see what you would do with it or you can just take it on a whole different path if you want to. Now, a couple of things here. If you wanna grab the raw files, click this link. It'll take you to my website. There is an email sign up form there, but it's not mandatory. So you don't have to go in and sign your email in or anything like that. You can download the raw files for free. But if you do like the videos, I ask you to sign up for my email community and just let you know when I do new stuff. Also, please click the subscribe button here and that way you subscribe to my feed and you won't miss any videos as I add them into the feed there, you won't miss anything. Now, a couple things about the, uh, the photo here. So this was taken, I taught a workshop in Cape Cod. We got up for sunrise, it was looking really bad out, but the sky just did what it needed to do at the right time and it gave us a beautiful sunrise. I was on a tripod, um, aperture priority F8, and I think I had one tenth of a second ISO 100, no long exposure or anything like that. The, the water was really smooth. Just ended up being a really nice sunrise. But I think what you'll see is, is it also opens up the opportunity for a lot of fun Lightroom and Photoshop stuff to do to the photo. All right, so that said, let's go ahead and jump right in. So the first thing I'm gonna to wanna to do here is hop over into the basic panel in the develop module here. And a little bit about my workflow as I look at this photo, a couple things I'm thinking here. Um, exposure's not gonna cut it. The exposure slider, It'll be good for it'll be good for helping me feel out the range that I have available in this photo. Like you know, the sky looks bright, but I've got a lot of detail there. I can pull all that back, which is good to know. It helps me kind of helps me plan what I'm going to do later. Open up the exposure. I can say, well, I got all the detail that I want here in the foreground, so I can crank that up as much as I need to as well. But the exposure slider is not really going to get me there because I, I, I can't, I, I want to go both ways, right? I can't go one way or the other. I need both the highlights and the shadows. So what we do here is we come back here to the highlights. I'll pull those back. All right, I'm not going to pull them all the way back because it starts to look, it starts to do funky things up here in the sky if we pull it way too back here. So I'm going to pull it a little bit back because we'll handle that with uh, another tool in a second here. I'm going to open up the shadows. See, we got lots of shadow detail, so I'll open up the shadows there. And then I'll go to whites and blacks. I'm going to option or alt click. And that gives me, when I option or alt click, it's kind of like going to the histogram. You see if there's a gap over here. What that does is this lets me see that I have a white point. So just hold down my option or alt key, click on the white slider, get it to the point where I have a few little specks there. And then option or alt click again on blacks move it over here to the left until I have a couple little specks for a black point there. Um, looking pretty good. Now let's take care of the sky. So this is a good point to do this uh, really before we go any further. I'm going to go grab the graduated filter and what I want to do here is I want to darken the sky and I'm going to bring the exposure down to show you I think what, what we automatically assume but I'm not just going to do that. So bring the exposure down, click and drag and I can darken the sky. In this example, that's not really what I want to do. I don't want to make all these clouds so dark. I don't want to make them to the point where they're black, but I do want to bring back the detail here. So that's where I'm going to come over here to just a little bit of negative exposure and then bring back those highlights a little bit too. So that, that way it's just concentrating in that area where I have the graduated filter and it's not bringing back the highlights in the whole entire photo. I just want it done in that little tiny area right there. This is a good smooth way to do it. You can see as it goes down through there, I can kind of move that around a little bit, kind of finesse how I get it onto the sky there. I think that's perfect right in that area there. Um, that's looking pretty good. Let's take a look there. We can hit the little toggle switch for the sky. That's before, that's after, I like it. I might go here and add a little bit of warmth just to enhance the sunshine a little bit, maybe even a little bit of red on that tint. Let's give it a little bit of red as well. All right, let's close the graduated filter here. Now, next up, uh, clarity. Clarity is good for the, the photo. I think clarity can make, can it almost gives the impression of sharpening. Um, not really what I want to do in this photo because I, I don't like, it's kind of giving it almost too much of a grungy style, almost like a softer type of a photo. So I'd go negative with it, but uh, I am going to go a little bit negative with it. It just gives almost a soft glow to it. 
Now, what I am going to do is go grab my brush and let's double click. See, I have a couple sliders, you know, moved here. If I double click the word effect, it resets all of them to zero. And then I'm going to increase the clarity. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint the clarity into certain parts of the clouds, mainly in the middle here. All right. I want to enhance that a little bit. I think it adds a nice amount of depth, especially where there's color, but I want to keep it away from the dark clouds because it, it kind of makes the dark clouds appear almost a little bit darker and I don't want that. Also, don't forget to do it in the water on the reflection and you can kind of see it. I'll just bounce it back and forth so you can see what we're doing here. I'm not going to go quite up to 100%, but I'll get about 50, 60% there. So that's looking pretty good. Maybe let's see a little bit of contrast up there. Yeah, I'm not going to do anything with the exposure. Maybe just a little bit more contrast. And I think that looks good. All right, let's close out of here. What else? Uh, a couple things I think, you know what? I'm going to go back to my brush and let's start to bring a little bit more interest up front. So I'm going to hit the left bracket key. That makes my brush nice and small. I'm actually going to zoom in. Let's go to the navigator panel. I'm just going to go fill. Um, one to one is a little bit too close. So let's set this. Let's see. One to two. Yeah, it's still a little too close. Let's go one to three. So this is about, yeah, I think that looks pretty good. And what I'm going to do here, I'll double click effect again to reset everything to zero. And I'm going to increase the exposure slider. What I want to do is just bring a little bit more to the boat here. Now, I'm painting on the boat. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this. Um, what I would, if you're really going to be particular about it, you'd want to turn auto mask on, kind of paint around those edges. And that's usually what I do. I turn auto mask on, I paint around the edges and I kind of outline the entire boat. And then once I do the outline around the whole thing, then I turn auto mask off and then I fill everything else in between. But just to save time, I'm just going to kind of paint here and I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on it. But don't forget, you guys will get the file. You can spend as much time on it as you want. Just in the interest of the video, I don't think you want to sit there and watch me paint meticulously on there for the next 20 minutes. So I'm going to kind of boost the boat up a little bit here, and I think that'll help bring some attention to the foreground we have in the photo. And that, to me, that's what was lacking as I looked at the photos. Just everything was kind of dull in the foreground. So I'm just going to boost that up a little bit. And let's see open that up. I really got to zoom back out to kind of get a good feel for it. I think that looks good. I could even add some warmth to it with the temperature slider, which gives it a little bit of almost artificial warmth, like the sun is coming up, everything's warm. And then at this point, it's kind of up to you. You know, I, I'm going to hit new on, the, on the, the adjustment brush here. I don't want to make everything else as bright, so I'll pull back on the, the exposure there. But I think I would probably want to go in here and paint Maybe just along the uh, the boardwalk, along the dock there, and just paint in a couple other places there. Again, not on those poles. Just go in there and be a little bit more meticulous than I was. You'd have to zoom in to do it, but just to bring a little bit more interest, and again, warm that up a bit. And that kind of, to me, that brings more interest to the foreground. So let's see what it looks like. That's before. That's after. I like it. Uh, I do think maybe on the boat it's a little bit too bright, so I'll just go to the exposure slider and back off just a hair. You can even try some clarity on there. I think it'll just kind of give it a little bit more uh, contrast and detail to it, so that looks good. Let's see here. I think the only other thing I would do is uh, let's check out the detail slider. We'll zoom in on the photo. I'll zoom way in. And uh, it's pretty sharp, but We'll add a little bit of amount to it. I think radius about 1.2, 1.3. I'm not going to mess with the detail. I, I actually, I think we're doing just fine on sharpness. So I don't really need to add, uh, as I look through the photo, I don't really need to add any more, uh, any more detail to it. Cause all it's going to really do is add texture. And I, I think we're doing good on the, on the sharpness side of things. Go over here to lens corrections, and if you're really picky, which I am not, but if you're the really picky type, you could see there's a green kind of outline, a little fringe on there. That's a chromatic aberration. Again, it's the techie people that really care about that stuff. I don't, but if you do, you can turn on reduce or uh, remove chromatic aberrations. You'll see that little green fringe goes away there. All right. And then I always enable profile corrections. It just gets rid of a little bit of that vignetting around. And uh, then, of course, I'm going to go right back in and add the vignette to it. Like
like so. Looking good. Last thing I would do, you could be done here if you wanted to, but all these little telephone wires and everything are kind of bugging me here. I can tell you Lightroom is never gonna remove all of them. So this would be a good job for Photoshop. So we would go photo, edit in Photoshop. It's gonna jump us over to Photoshop with a copy of the photo here. And, and Photoshop's content aware tools, you know, the spot healing brush, um, those tools are just gonna work magic on a photo like this. Uh, where Lightroom, Lightroom is not really good for that much of a detail thing. It might get rid of a wire here and there, but it's not gonna do what I wanna do here for it. So I'm gonna zoom in. Let's make ourselves a blank layer. Press the letter J for the spot healing brush, which is right over here. Make sure content aware is turned on and make sure sample all layers is turned on because we're gonna work on this blank layer here. I won't do the whole photo, but you'll see the, uh, the idea of what I wanna do. I'm just gonna start painting along here. And trust me, it'll be so much faster doing it in Photoshop than it would Lightroom. Real easy and Photoshop will make these disappear like they were never ever there, okay? So spend a couple minutes on it kind of see a little bit of a fringe or an outline around something, just paint over it again. It's usually pretty good. Uh, the second time you go over, it'll get rid of any of the remnants from the first time. Okay. Again, you know, I'm not going to go through the whole photo, but we can see as I just kind of paint along there, I can get rid of the wires. Uh, don't forget, you know, reflections in the water. If you get rid of something up here, you'll want to go down here and get rid of it. There's a lot of little spots and junk in the water that I'll clean up. Okay, again, that'll take me probably five, 10 minutes to go through it all so you get the idea. And the reason why I get rid of that stuff is because I think of this photo printed. Like if I were to print this big on the wall, Somebody could come up and look at it and wonder, you know, is that a smudge on the frame? Is it a spot? Is it a piece of dirt? Is it a speck that's on the glass? What is it? You know, I don't want people wondering. So that's why I clean up some of this stuff in here just to kind of, not that everything has to be meticulous, but I want to take the guesswork out of it. I don't want you to have to wonder, is it a spot on the frame or is it a spot in the water? So that's why I'll clean some of that stuff up. Honestly, if it's me, I'm gonna probably go get rid of some of these reflections in the water too. Um, I know they're over here, but you would never know there's a reflection there. So I would spend a little bit of time and get rid of them. And I've done it before. Not gonna do it now because it did take me six, seven minutes, but using the spot healing brush along with the clone stamp tool, I was able to remove that. So I, I, I give you a challenge. I put the raw photo out there for you guys. If you want a little bit of a challenge to go in there and remove this, um, you could do it with the spot healing brush and, uh, and a combination of the clone stamp tool. Like I said, it took me almost 10 minutes to do, but it's a fun little exercise, okay? When you're done, just hit file save. That will take us right back over into Lightroom. It'll save a copy of our original photo. So there it is. I will go to, you know what, as I look at this, overall, I think I wanna boost the exposure. All right, let's go check out the whites again. Maybe boost that a little bit. And I think that looks a little bit better. Let's go to the before photo and I'll hit reset. So let's take a look. There's our before photo and there's our after. Okay, before and after. Well, there you have it. So uh, I hope you enjoyed that one. That one was, uh, it was fun for me because especially, you know, when you show up to a shoot and a sunrise shoot like that, you get up early and it doesn't look like anything. And then it turns out to be like that. Um, it's just, it's, it's a fun time when that happens. So I hope you enjoyed it. Like I said earlier, if you do like these videos, please click on the subscribe link right here. That way you subscribe to my YouTube page. And whenever I do new videos, you don't have to search around for them. They get put right into your feed. Thanks so much for watching everybody. And I'll talk to you again real soon.